Under Adjust Edge, we have all our different options for adjusting our mask. For example, I can drag my smooth slider along to the right, and it will smooth it out, smooth out my mask drastically, but it's not helping us at this stage. We don't really need to smooth the mask here, so I'm just going to drag it back down to zero. We can increase the feather of our mask to soften the edges of, of our mask, but in this case, I don't really want to do that, so I'm going to drag it back down to zero. If we look at our mask right now, we can see we've got a fairly harsh, overly contrasted mask, and I want to soften that a little bit. It actually looks quite fine up here on the top of the head where we have some fairly crisp lines, but down here where we have all this wispy hair, it's a bit of a mess. So what I want to do is I want to lower the contrast of my mask, so I drag my contrast slider to the left, maybe down to about, say, 18, looks pretty good. And under Shift Edge, we can either push the edge out further, for example, to the right, which encompasses a lot more of the background, which we don't want. So we can drag it the other way to bring the mask a lot closer to the actual pixels of the strands of hair, perhaps to about minus 18, and that looks pretty good. Now, this option here to decontaminate colors is very handy when you're trying to depatch someone whose hair is on top of, say, a blue sky. And although you may be doing a fairly good job of extracting the hair from the background, you may still be capturing these little elements of the blue sky. So by ticking decontaminate colors, what it does is Photoshop intelligently decides which colors aren't needed and it will make adjustments to the color to say remove that blue from the otherwise perfectly blonde hair. But because we're extracting a blonde model from a white background, we don't really need to have this ticked. So I'll untick decontaminate colors. And under output, we have a few different options here. We can select new layer, which will just make a selection of what we've done and dump it onto a new layer. In effect, cutting the model out from the background. But we don't want to do that. We just want to have it masked. So that's why I have this option ticked, new layer with layer mask. Okay, so if I zoom in a little bit closer into the hair, even though we've done a fairly good job of refining this mask as much as we can, we still have little bits of the background which are being caught up in between the strands of hair. And that's what this brush does here. If we run the brush over these areas, we are in effect telling the computer to subtract the bulk of that area from the surrounding edges. And as you can see, these, if I'm running, as I'm running these, this brush over these areas, we can see that those white areas are disappearing from the background or from the mask. Alternatively, where there are areas which have been included in the mask and you want to exclude them, for example, this little area in between the inside of the arm and the waist, if I zoom in on there, we can see that it's a little bit hazy. If we want to exclude this from our selection, if I hold down the Option key, the plus symbol, which is inside the brush cursor, becomes a negative symbol. And if I brush inside this area, inside the edges, just like this, and let go, it will exclude that area in between the arm and the waist from my mask. So we can see our refined mask has done a fairly good job of sorting out all this fine hair from the background, although it hasn't done a great job up the top here, at the top of the head. But that's okay, we'll sort that out in a second. So I'll go ahead and click OK.